what are the major differences between the cell mediated, cell mediated response rather right and the humoral response what are the major differences any major differences that we can note Well, one of the things I noticed is that the humoral response uses um, three helper cells and the cell mediated use the killer, the um, cytotoxic um, T cells. Okay. Mm -hmm. One is more dependent on immunoglobulins while the other is not so dependent on immunoglobulins. All right, so we have the humor response more dependent on plasma cells producing immunoglobulins, while the cell mediated response is not really that much. We'll really look at the cytokine production and the proliferation of NK cells and cytotoxic T cells. All right, so what we're looking at is generally the primary response, right, involving T, T cells, right. And they're especially important for, patho for intracellular pathogens such as viruses and certain types of bacteria as well as cancer cells. So we spoke about antigen presentation first, right? All nucleated cells express MHC class 1 molecules, right? Specifically, all nucleated cells, every one of them, right? The MHC 1 complexes, right? have antigen fragments right loaded onto the mhc onto the entire um complex itself right and it's transported to the cell surface right so cytotoxic t cells can encounter them right we also have mhc class 2 complexes right that type of presentation right so these mhc class 2 complexes right um are usually done by antigen presenting cells such as dendritic cells macrophages and b cells so what are we saying the pathogens are the ones that present the MHC class 1, right? The antigen presenting cells are the ones that present the MHC class 2, right? So we have that there. We're going to have the activation of a T cell. So let's say a dendritic cell did some phagocytosis, right? And it has its MHC class 2 complex being presented there, right? Firstly, we're, we're going to have a naive T cell, right? So a T cell that is not completely um, mature, mature as yet. We're going to have a naive T cell now binding to its receptor. The T cell receptor, right? On CD8+, plus. I don't think you guys go that far, but we're going to bind to the MHC complex, right? And then it, what it will do is set off a trigger of signals, right? That are required for the full activation of the entire T cell, right? And what we're going to have here now, right, is the production of cytokines, right? So usually we have a helper T cell. So if it's not a naive T cell, it's going to be probably a helper T cell that will recognize the antigen presented, right, and produces these cytokines, right? So it could be a naive T cell or a helper T cell. The helper T cell will just be more proficient in producing cytokines. That's the only difference, really. But it's not really something noteworthy, per se. But well, we have that there, right? We have the production of cytokines, right? Okay. The cytokines will trigger clonal expansion and, differ and differentiation, right? So we're going to have the cytokines allowing for, it's basically going to be a signaling system to call more T cells, right? As well as to cause the proliferation, clonal expansion and proliferation, you can't call it either, either. But clonal expansion is more acceptable and the differentiation. So we're gonna have the T cells dividing, right? Producing more of themselves, some differentiating into cytotoxic T cells and some differentiating into helper T cells, right? So the cytotoxic T cells now, right? Those are the ones that will go and bind where the effector cytotoxic T cell that will directly attack infected in cells, right? It will directly attack the infected cells specifically. Right? and cause apoptosis while the memory cytotoxic T cells will persist in the body for a long term immunity right? we also have helper cells right? the helper cells help to proliferate and differentiate um, different types of cells based on the cytokine environment right? so what it will do is assist in the continued proliferation right, of um, the inflammatory response 
of more cytokines and actually go and assist the B cells in producing antibodies, right? So remember when we spoke about the humoral response, right? The cytotoxic helper cell, right? Well, not cytotoxic helper cell, the T cell, right? The helper T cell would have assisted binding to the MHC class 2 complex and producing, well, helping the production of more cytokines for the clonal expansion of B cells into plasma cells, right? for the antibody um production but what's generally happening here right is that the helper cell can either do that or continue to just produce cytokines all right for the more for the increased clonal expansion of t-cells themselves so the processes are connected and that's where it's connected with the helper t-cell that's where it's connected right but generally we're just looking at every other step right including the t-cells only so we're not going to go into the b-cell proliferation much right we're going to have the destruction of infected cells. So the effector T cell, right? Our effector cytotoxic T cell now will now bind to the MHC class 1 complexes of cancer cells or any type of pathogens or anything like that. And they will release what we call perforins and granzymes. Right? What these will do now, what perforins will do is perforate actually or make holes within the membrane and the granzymes will go in and start to rip apart different parts of cellular machinery right and that will cause the content of the, the cell to now spill out and that is generally what we're gonna call apoptosis it's programmed cell death right so it's going to bind it's going to infiltrate the cell with its with its granin with its granzymes right and perforin and destroy the cell okay that's generally what it is so the perforins make pores are um not pores um holes rather and the pores right within the membrane itself right and then the granzymes are gonna trigger that entire apoptosis there right so the regulation and memory formation as well we have the regulatory t cells right the t reg right or oh, the, go ahead isn't it that when the cytotoxin cells create the holes in the um, thing in Malu, it secretes hydrogen peroxide, which then kills the cell, kill the, yeah, the cell? The hydrogen peroxide are produced a suitable environment for the granzymes to work, right? So the hydrogen peroxide itself isn't the only thing that really destroys the cell, right? But it assists in the creation of um, suitable environments, as well as the fact that it is a peroxide. And peroxides can be reactive within the cellular machinery so peroxides would be produced right as well as um the fact that they can assist but majorly assist in the um, proliferation of granzymes so they can actually trigger apoptosis so the peroxides actually be useful in this case as well Okay. So the regulation and memory formation, we have the regulatory T cells being produced. These will actually um, produce immunosuppressive kind um, cytokines, right? Will actually that will actually dampen the immune response. So the immune response can't go on forever and ever, right? So once the threat has been neutralized, generally, these will actually go on to produce the suppressive, the suppressants, right? And actually reduce the immune response. Okay, that's what they would do. And then the memory T cells now, those will actually store pieces of antigens, right? And prepare for any type of re-exposure in the future. And we're gonna look at the memory um, cells, what they generally do, right? And look at the diagrams or the graphs relating to the initial and the subsidiary responses. Okay. So looking at this now, this is generally a summary of the entire response. All right. We also need to look at how um, HIV would affect right, the T cell specifically, right? So it's a type of retrovirus and it's a structure of a virus, right? So we'd have a viral envelope, glycoproteins are, on the pre on, are presented on the surface right 
within the viral envelope of matrix proteins that will surround a capsid that contains the RNA. So retroviruses have RNA, right? And we have the different reverse transcriptases, right? That will actually assist in creating more, right? Genetic information, the production of more viruses once um, it infiltrates a cell. So what it will do, right? When it enters the, when HIV generally enters the body, right? And it will specifically actually target specific T cells, right? So what it will do is bind to the CD4 receptors on the specific CD4 positive T cells, right? And enters them. Once it enters, the HIV would actually replicate using its cellular machinery, right? So it's going to use these transcriptase enzymes and stuff like that to use, right, all the genetic material within the T cell in order to prol proliferate itself, right? So after a while, right, it will actually replicate and that will damage and destroy all the processes within the T cell and the T cell will eventually die, right? So it said, so the CD4 T cells are essential for coordination of the immune response and activating our immune cells to fight off infections. So what happens when the HIV um, viruses, the retroviruses will generally take over these T cells and destroy a majority of them? We're going to have immune dysfunction, right? So the decreased number of T cells right, in the immune system you now um, causes it to become completely compromised impairing the body's ability to approach any type of disease or infection, right? As a result, individuals with HIV become more susceptible to opportunistic infections and certain types of cancers. For example, Streptococcus myces lives all over you, right? Right, a lot of Pseudomonas and Streptococcus, right, um, and those type of things live all over your body. They're in your eyelids, they're in your mouth, they're in your nose, they're everywhere, right? But our T cells assist us in fighting off these infections, right? Well, these pathogens that exist all over our skin, they are part of our environment, right? But what happens when you have immune dysfunction from, from the, um, the HIV, right? What it generally does is destroys your immune system's ability to produce these cytotoxic T cells to actually fight them off. So now the simple bacteria that just live on your skin can kill you. The common cold can kill you, right? If you have an immunocompromised um, immune system, right? So we also have chronic inflammation will occur you now as the T cells are unable to fight off all of these different variants, right? These different thi these different infections, right? Um, the, in the rate of infection would actually increase within the body, right? As the T cells are not able to fight it off, right? The mast cells, right? And the granulocytes, different granulocytes, especially neutrophils, will now, to now start to produce antihistamines at a completely um, ludicrous rate, right? So it will start to inflame the entire body, showing that there is an issue, there is a problem. But once it's now selling, sending out these different, um, you know, cyt well, not cytokines, but it's sending out these complements now, right? And the histamines and hep heparin, etc., right? nothing will generally come to its response to assist in destroying or mediating the infection because the t-cells are now down right so we have that there so it's a general issue there immunoglobulin some persons may say oh the humoral immune system has something to say about this not necessarily right this is generally an issue with compromising the entirety of the immune system so usually when persons have hiv it is not HIV that kills them primarily, but it's the fact that they can't defend themselves from anything else. So it's literally anything else that kills them, right? So we have that there. So that's generally what it does to destroy the immune system of these individuals, right? So HIV itself can be contracted sexually, as everyone generally knows. Um, if your barber has trimmed somebody who has HIV without changing the razor, you can get it. You can get it through needles and various other ways that you, um, blood transfusions, anything that deals with the transfer of uh, blood or um, body fluids from one person to another, all right? So when you go to your barber, please ask to use a clean razor, all right? Because that's quite important. Because there have been cases of persons popping up with the retroviruses in their system, having absolutely no idea how it got there.
right? So we have that there, okay? Any questions about this? <laughs> 